Hey guys, so in the previous video I was talking about why the need for style guides, the need for standardizing your code base and how it benefits when you have junior people in your team and all of those type of things. So in this video, I'm not going to waste time. I'm just going to dive into a Visual Studio and try set up an .editor config for you guys and show you how it works. So the basic idea behind the .NET, uh, the .editor config, sorry, .editor config is simply because of it's supported by multiple IDEs. So you have Reshapa supporting this thing. You have JetBrains kind of supporting this thing. Now you have Visual Studio also supporting this particular .NET editor config, which helps in terms of, you know, standardizing. It doesn't matter what IDE the team uses, but you can sort of enforce a particular style uh, guide within a team. So cool, inspiration was taken from the .NET uh, team side of thing. So when they say they're using everything by default, use everything from Visual Studio and not add uh, any other custom thing to the project and all of that. Well, it's their opinion. You can use whatever. So what I was looking is at is the .NET editor config. And here, basically, you get a documentation of .NET edit, uh, well, .editor config and how it's being used, the patterns, da, 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 da. Then you look at the IDEs that support that editor config without any plugins and all of that. So as I mentioned, you had IntelliJ there. You have GitLab. I'm hoping when it runs builds, it supports that. You have PyCharm, ReShap, Rider. You have Visual Studio now supporting that. You have KText Editor and all and a bunch of uh, other uh, what do you call IDEs supporting that. Then if you want to download, uh, what do you call a plugin? You can download a plugin basically for your code blocks, for those C++, C++ Java guys, code blocks. You can also download one for Eclipse, for Atom. Uh, you can download one for Visual Studio Code if you wanted to sublime text. Notepad++ as well. There you go. Cool. So that's .NET Editor Config and how it works. Da, 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 da. I'll share the link with you guys uh, on this one. So. What I want to jump into now is basically going to a C Sharp project. Uh, here, I'll just try to create something. C, uh, C Sharp. Okay, I'll create a web app next. In the web app, I'll just name it demo. Uh, what's this? Demo editor config. Cool. That's that. Next. Uh, on this one, I'll just go with .NET 5. There's .NET 6 there, but just going with .NET 5 for now. Cool. Doesn't really matter that much. I'm creating a project that is created, but I don't know why it decided to basically go to a separate screen. But anyways, this is the project that we, I created, Greenfield project. On top of that, what I'll just do on the solution is I'll just add then on top of add, I would say new project. I'm going to add a class library to it. Class library, cool. Class library one, doesn't matter. Then create the do.NET file. Cool. So here, essentially, when you look at this, I have two projects. So I have my class library going on there, and I have my editor config, right? Uh, and my web app, I mean. So what I wanted to do was show you something when you how to add essentially the .NET editor .dot editor config sorry is you can easily right click on the project and when you go to add what would happen is you'd have this uh, new editor config if I click on that it basically as an editor config file for me and this is what the editor config file looks like gives me an interface to basically uh, manipulate this file however I wanted using uh, what do you call this particular interface built into Visual Studio. Cool. I've added that on that last library. I can easily go to my other project, which is my web app, and essentially right-click and click on uh, that editor config. Then it does that for me as well. You can see it added a bunch of uh, uh, editor config options that I can set up and all of that, coding style, naming styles, analyzers. So you have a bunch of analyzers that I can manipulate here, naming styles. It tells me for my interface, I want my all my interfaces to begin with an I, I want that to be that, and the owning levels. Do I want it to be an error and owning? I choose whatever I want to do there. Then 
if you look at that that's basically that but i can't really go on and add those things on all the projects what if i want to enforce certain things on a solution level so everything that's in here i wanted to enforce my editor config rules so cool there i can easily go now i've right clicked on the solution then if i go to uh, add and i say new editor config it's there on the solution level it has an error it's a known error from microsoft what you need to do is close it and open it when you open it uh there's a bunch of options right on the bunch of options what i wanted to do is let's say white space uh white space if it could give me something okay cool maybe name uh golden style okay it doesn't want to give me fuck all so i'll just search for space so cool uh, let me see if, uh, okay say so here you see i can determine if i want my name sources to be a uh, blog or client uh, let me see Okay, cool. Uh, I want something else. Okay, I'm gonna search the missing line, line space. On oh, lines, on multiple lines. Don't ask me why I'm searching for something. Okay, cool. You see there, it says allow multiple blank lines. So that is within my Kelly brackets. Do I want multiple uh, blank lines and allow blank lines between consecutive braces? So currently, when you look at my code, uh, but my code, there's no warnings, there's no errors. So if I look at that, I, I said the value should be no, so I don't want to allow that. And if it does, I want to make it an error. Cool. There's another issue that I picked up with this thing was when I save it, uh, it doesn't automatically save. So I needed to come back here and basically set this thing again. Some various reason Visual Studio doesn't uh, play well when it comes to that. Let me see if it was set. Cool. It was set to say that I don't want any of this. And if it happens, I want an error. So if I go to my class library on my uh, what do you call it? class library one project and I basically add multiple lines there, you can say same. I doesn't allow multiple blank lines. Let me say public. Uh, class class one so here i'm just creating a constructor so on the constructor uh that uh, i'm just removing the blank lines now for you you'll see that if i remove the blank lines everything works if i do this it starts saying i don't want multiple blank lines if i start opening a blank line there it says consecutive braces must not have blank lines so those are the rules that i set up there cool it shows that so i'm just going to clear that issue there i'm going to go into my program file let me see cool in my program file i'll start by making a blank line there it says a lot uh multiple blank lines it doesn't like that so i need to fix that if i go to that and let's say for example i don't make multiple blank lines but i make curly brackets and after that, I open a line, you see it says consecutive curly bracket issue. So essentially, that's that. And okay, cool. What I wanted to show was these errors are currently in my uh, project file, my web app file. But what I could easily do was come here. If let's say, for example, the styles don't apply in here, what I could do is I could come here and say lines. Uh, so that's that it's basically showing me the two editor configs uh, if i could see the path a little bit better uh, so you see these ones are the editor configs that i have on the project so on this project level i could say please do that and i could disable that if i wanted to so this editor config here shouldn't pop up errors so if you look at that, I have multiple lines there, but because of the setting that I have in this particular editor config, the errors go away. If I delete this, it should, this basically demonstrate that the parent one will start, uh, what do you call, playing effect essentially.
So that's how the hierarchy of the editor configs work. So on the solution level, it applies to everything. If you have a sub uh, dot editor config on the project level, it will basically take precedence of that. Why is this cool? This is cool because uh, these settings do not actually affect the global settings that you have here where you have editor uh, settings. So it doesn't allow, well, it doesn't want you to set them from here. You can enforce them from there because users have different preferences and from project to project, you might have different preferences. So therefore you don't have to force your developers to have uh, what you call similar Visual Studio settings essentially. So you can enforce the rules using the editor config, hence why it's that powerful. Cool, thank you very much guys. If you like, subscribe and share the video. If you found that there's something that I skipped or you don't like my presentation skills, please let me know because that's how I improve my communication skills going forward. Thank you very much.